Before we begin modeling with subds, I'd like to cover some best practices to hopefully help you avoid topology issues that can occur with subdivision surface modeling. Subds work best on quadrilaterals, that is, polygons with four sides. All of these cubes or boxes have quadrilaterals on them everywhere. The sphere primitive and actually this cylinder primitive also have triangles built into them that meet at a single point, which is known as a pole. Subdivision surfaces don't handle poles very well, where five or more edges meet at a single point. It's really optimized for situations in which four edges meet at a single point or a grid structure. Let's add an open subdiv modifier to all of these objects and see how they react. So I'll drag a selection rectangle around all five of those. Go over to the modify panel. From the modifier list, add an open subdiv modifier and click off of those objects. We can see that the cubes appear to have maintained their structure pretty well, except for this one over here on the left, which has become really rounded out. That's because the cube on the left had extremely low level of detail to begin with. The other two cubes had some definition around their corners. If we select any one of those objects and adjust its open subdiv modifier, we will affect all of them because we've instanced the modifier onto all of them by selecting them all and then adding the modifier. So let's increase the number of iterations here and see what happens. At two iterations, this cube over here has turned almost into a sphere, whereas these other cubes have maintained their shape pretty well. I'll bring the iterations down to zero and take a look at polygon counts. I've got my statistics listed up here in the upper left, and I'm displaying statistics for the selected object, and I've also chosen to display statistics for triangles in addition to polygons. Remember that polygons are composed of triangles. And we can see that if we select this cube, go over to the display panel, and down in the display properties, disable edges only. The cube is composed of six polygons. Each polygon is composed of two triangles. And normally the triangle edge interior to a polygon is hidden unless edges only is disabled. And I'm illustrating this so that we can see what happens when we add the open subdiv. And by the way, if you want to set up those statistics the way I have, you do that through the configuration dialog. In the viewport menu, go to the plus sign and configure viewports. And you can set up the statistics the way you need them to be. I'm using total plus selection and also triangle count. Okay, when I select that cube, my statistics tell me that I've got six polygons, and 12 triangles. Okay, back over to our modify panel. In the open subdiv modifier, I'll increase the number of iterations to one. And we've quadrupled these values here. We now have 48 triangles and 24 polygons. Effectively, every time we increase the number of iterations, we're going to quadruple the number of quadrilaterals and for an object that's composed entirely of quadrilaterals, the number of triangles will also quadruple. Okay, I'll go back to the display panel and turn edges only back on again just to remove that display clutter. Back to the modify panel. We can also disable ISO line display and see things a little bit more clearly. Now we can see that the poles at the top of the sphere and cylinder are causing some problematic topology. And if we tried to animate this with a deformation, we would have some serious problems. So especially for character and creature work, you want to try to avoid these poles any way you can. Subds also aren't very graceful with polygons having five or more sides. I'll make some basic topology changes to the cylinder to chop that big polygon into smaller quadrilaterals. So select the cylinder and Remove the open subdiv modifier temporarily. Just select it and click the trash can icon. Let's get in close on that object with the Z key. I want to cut all quadrilaterals on the top of the cylinder, and that'll work best if the number of sides is a multiple of four. I'll bring the sides parameter down to 16. We'll use the cut tool in editable poly. Right click, 
convert to convert to editable poly. Scroll down in the modifier panel. Activate the cut tool just as we did previously in the course. And I want to cut three edges in each direction. Right click in between those cuts. So click, click, and right click, 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 and right click. Also in the other direction. And I've done it this way so that I've got a quadrilateral here as well. Even though it's roughly triangle shaped, there are actually four sides to that polygon. Right click to exit the cut tool and add an open subdiv modifier. We can actually just copy one from the other object. Select another object, right click on open subdiv, choose copy, go over to the cylinder, right click and choose paste instanced. And now we've got a much better structure there on the top. If we orbit around to the bottom, we'll see the difference before and after adding those new edge loops. This is a structure that's going to deform very well and will probably not have any errors rendering. So I recommend that you try to build this into all of your open subdiv projects. Try to build your object out of all quadrilaterals and try to avoid poles where five or more edges meet at a point.